This is the companion video to an article entitled Drawing a Frame in SketchUp that will appear in the December 2009 issue of Timber Frame Magazine. Timber Framing Magazine is a quarterly publication of the Timber Framers Guild. You can get more info on the magazine and the Timber Framers Guild at www.tfguild.org. The most important skill needed to draw a timber frame is to be able to create timbers and make them into components. When you launch SketchUp, a young man will appear on the screen. We can delete him by clicking on him with the Select tool and pressing the Delete key. Next, we will choose the Rectangle tool, move to the origin, click, and drag along the green and red axes. Now, without clicking again, I'm going to type in 8, 8 and press Enter. This creates an 8 inch by 8 inch rectangle. Now we will select the push pull tool, hover over this rectangle until it becomes dotted and click. Now we're moving in an upward direction and I'm going to type in 10 feet and press enter. As we zoom out we can see we have created our first timber. A couple of things that are important to note about the distance box. One is that you don't actually click in the box. When you are drawing something, you can simply type in the dimension you need and press enter. Secondly, you can change the dimension that you've entered anytime until you pick another tool. So for instance, I could type in five feet and change the size of this timber. I could type in four inches, make a very short timber. Um, I'll go back to 10 feet. But now if I go up and select the eraser tool, for instance, and try to type in 3 feet, I can no longer change the size of the timber. The next thing we want to do is make this timber into a component. First I want to demonstrate what can happen if you don't make it into a component. I'm going to select the entire timber and reproduce it really quickly. And then if we move this copy of the post into the original post and then move it back again you can see that the two posts are sticking together making a very odd shape. So I'm going to do Control Z to undo that and go back to the original one post. So now if we go up to the select tool and triple click somewhere within the post and then right click on it go down in the context menu to make component a box will appear and within that dialog box we're going to type in post 8 by 8 10 feet and click create. Now if we try that same thing we're going to make a copy of this post. We're going to move the copy right into it, move it away again. It does not stick to the original. Next we're going to create a 24 by 30 foot concrete slab to move our timbers around on. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool, click at the origin, and then drag a rectangle out. And I'm going to type in 30 feet, comma, 24 feet, and hit enter. As we zoom out, we can see we have a concrete slab created. Now, if your slab doesn't look like this, if it's oriented in the other way, we can, you can change that orientation by typing in 24 foot, comma, 30 foot. And now you can see the orientation is opposite. But I'm going to go back to the original, 30, comma, 24. Basically, you want 30 feet along the green axis. So I'll click on the tape measure, go from one side to the other. You can see that that's 30 feet. I'm going to click on this line and go to the opposite side of the slab and you can see that that's 24 feet. So the next step is going to be making this slab into a group. So I'm going to select the select tool, triple click on the slab, right click and select make group. Now let's create a simple bent with four posts in the 24 foot dimension of the slab. First we'll go up to the select tool and then single click on our post and you'll see that it's outlined in blue. Now we will go get the move copy tool and this starts out in move mode but if you tap the control key you'll see a plus symbol appear next to the cursor 
that means you're in copy mode. So I'm going to click on the bottom inside corner of this post and release the mouse button and move to the opposite side of the slab and it will click it will snap when I reach the corner when it snaps I'm going to click the mouse button again now before we do anything we can quickly reproduce two more posts by typing in slash three and pressing the enter key this is using the array feature and basically we divided the distance between the two posts into three equal parts creating two more posts. Until you're more experienced in SketchUp, it's a good idea to measure things to make sure you've done everything correctly. So to do this, I'm going to use the Tape Measure tool, and I'm going to click on the leftmost post and drag until I snap to the outer side of the rightmost post, and you'll see a tooltip appear next to the cursor that said 24 feet. So that is the dimension we wanted. So I'm going to press escape and now do the same. I'm going to click here, move to the other inside corner and the tooltip now says 7 foot 1 and 15 16 inches. We get the exact same dimension on the inner two posts and the same dimension on the outer two posts. Now that we have some of the basics down, we're going to follow a design for a 24 by 30 foot pavilion designed by Jack Sobin. You can find a printed copy of this plan in a book titled 14 Small Timber Frames, published by the Timber Framers Guild. First let's select the tape measure tool, and I'm going to click on the left edge of the slab, and I'm going to drag, and you'll see that a guideline appears coming out parallel to that left edge of the slab. I'll type in 6 foot 8 and press enter and we've now established a guideline that's 6 foot 8 inches from the left hand side of the slab. I'm going to go up to the select tool, click on this left hand inside post and now go to the move tool, click on its inside edge and move it until it snaps to the guideline and click again. Now all we have to do is repeat that process on the other side. So I'll get the tape measure tool, click, drag, type in 6 foot 8, press enter, select tool, select this post, move tool, get the inside edge, click, snap to the guideline, click again. Now to remove these guidelines, go up to the edit menu and select delete guides. Let's make sure that the posts are positioned correctly. So to do so, once again, I'm going to click on the Tape Measure tool, and I'm going to click on the outside of this post to the outside, and the tooltip should say 6 foot 8 inches for this outer aisle. Same for the right-hand outer aisle. I'll click on this post, hover over this outside edge, 6 foot 8 inches, and the inner aisle, outside to outside, should be 12 feet. The pavilion design calls for an outer plate height of 9 foot 2 inches. With 8 by 8 top plates, that means we'll have to modify our outer posts to be 8 foot 6 inches in height. So that brings us to editing components and making them unique. So we'll start with the select tool, and we can select any of these posts by double clicking on it. And now that it's a component, you'll see that a dotted rectangle appears around this component. I'm going to go get the push-pull tool, hover over the top, click, and push down. And then type in 1 foot 6 and press enter. And that should change our post height to be 8 foot 6. Basically we subtracted 1 foot 6 from our 10 foot height. So now I'm going to right click outside of the component and choose close component from this menu. And to verify our height, I'll click on the tape measure tool, click, hover over the top, and you'll see that it's 8 foot 6. I'll press escape, and you'll see that all four of these measure 8 foot 6 in height. So that's the beauty of a component. If you change one, you change them all.